Hello everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. In this new series, you will learn how to make a crossy road game on Python using Pygame. The game would contain a total of five levels and would look like what you're seeing on your screen right now. Each level would have an increasing difficulty and the player would eventually win if he manages to pass through the levels. Now that's enough talk for this video, let's get right into our code. Now for this project to work, you need to first download all the game assets. And if you look at the screen, you should see all of my assets downloaded on the left. And if you want to download them, there is a link in the description which goes to a Google Drive attachment. And once you're there, you can download all the necessary files. Now let's get into the code right away. I'm going to start off by importing Pygame, um, but instead of just importing Pygame, I'm going to import it as P and this will help me save a lot of time later on. Um, now I'm going to declare a couple of constants, namely the screen width and the screen height. And the numbers I'm going to go with are 640 and 480. So it's a pretty good ratio to work with. Um, after you're done with that, now you can uh, add in this one line of code, which is p.init. And um, this is going to help you initialize all the modules within Pygame. And that's going to give you um, access to a whole bunch of functions that you wouldn't otherwise have access to. After this, we can set up our window and I'm going to call it win. And uh, to do that, you just need to type in p.display.setMode. And within the brackets, you need to put in a tuple um, with the width and height inside. And uh, just to make our game a little bit more fancy, I'm going to make sure that there's a caption on top of the window. And to do that, we can just set the caption to be Crossy Road. All right, so now we can set up our game clock. And this you will see is pretty useful later on. And this uh, helps us regulate the flow of the main loop. As of now, just type in what I'm typing in. And that is clock equals pi, uh, p dot time dot clock. And um, now I'm going to set up the basic main loop. So I'll have the variable, the Boolean variable as run as the flag. And uh, we'll also make sure that the program, you know, when the user clicks on close window, the program actually closes. And to do that, we just have to set up a simple event. And if the event um, type is p.quit, which is closing the window, then we can just exit this, um, you know, main loop. And um, I also want to make sure that the Pygame window closes in addition to the program terminating. And to do that, you can just add in a p.quit outside the main loop. And that is going to work exactly the way we want it to. Now I'm going to make sure that the screen is filled with some color and uh, we will obviously be changing this with the background later on. But as of now, I think this is a pretty good ground for testing. So I'll be filling it with a bright green color. And um, I will also make sure that I update the screen so that the user can see the changes going on. Now you can scroll up and start to create your first class. And this is going to be the cat itself. And after you type in the word cat, um, within the two brackets, what you can type in is p.sprite.sprite. .sprite. And um, if you know your classes, you will know that this is the inheritance. So we are going to be inheriting from this particular module. Uh, and that's because the cat is a sprite or basically the object is going to be a game object which is going to have certain um, certain things like you know an image and all of that uh, other stuff. Um, so once you have this in place now you can get into the init method and uh, right in uh, right at the beginning of the init method you need to make sure that the super class uh, which is where we're inheriting from is also initialized. So you can just type in super.init and this would make sure that, you know, the sprites work um, properly. And um, now each sprite, uh, not actually each sprite, but the cat sprite here is going to have a bunch of attributes. And um, I'm going to start off with self.x is equal to 50. And now x coordinate is going to be at the, you know, uh, at the left side of the screen, because that's where the cat is going to start off when the game begins. Um, now I'm going to have a self.y uh, so that the cat is right in the middle. And a self dot well of four because I think this works kind of neatly um, uh, in the crossy road game. So after you have self dot well set up, you can set up the height and the width of the image. And just like the velocity, these two things are modifiable, meaning you could um, change those up if you want um, better values for yourself. But I'm going to be going ahead with these um, two values. 
Now we'll be having two different images or costumes for the cat and those two are cat1 and cat2. Um, nothing too complicated, basically when the cat is moving um, towards the right, we'll be using the cat1 image and while the cat is moving towards the left, we will use the cat2 image. And that is pretty much all you need to do. So just have those um, images loaded and we will also scale them up. And to do that, we can use the p.transform.scale method and that will make sure that we can you know, change the dimensions of the image to a particular width and a height. And since we have the width and height already defined, we can just enter them um, the way I'm doing it right now. Since the cat is a sprite, it's important for it to have two different things. And those two are an image and a rectangle. So when the cat starts off in the beginning of the game, it's going to face towards the right. So I'm going to set the starting image to be cat1. And to get a rectangle, it's extremely simple. You can just type in um, self.image.getRect. So within the main update method of the sprite, I'm going to just set the center of the image slash the rectangle to be self.x comma self.y. And uh, uh, the reason I'm just having this is because I want to have another method coming within the update method itself. And um, that method is going to be called movement. So I'm going to first get, um, make a variable called keys within the method. And this is just going to get whichever key has been pressed. And um, the particular keys we're looking at are the arrow keys. So if the left arrow key is pressed, then um, you can actually do that by um, following the syntax uh, as I'm doing. Um, then what we will have to do is we will um, change the exposition uh, exposition by um, uh, by negative uh, of the velocity. And similarly, when the right arrow is pressed, we will change it by positive of the velocity. And um, it's pretty simple since um, the coordinates increase towards the right and decrease towards the left, we need to make sure that our x value changes accordingly. Now I'm going to copy and paste um, this for the up arrow and down arrow keys as well. And we can just change the x uh, axis to be y's. And it's uh, kind of tricky here because up would uh, technically be negative since the starting coordinate uh, is the top left, which is 0 comma 0. So as the coordinates go down, they increase and this is kind of counterintuitive and it took me a while to get used to it. Um, but the more up you go, um, the smaller your coordinate gets. So um, up is going to be negative velocity and when the down arrow key is pressed, we need to change it by, uh, we need to change the y value by the positive of the self dot well variable. Now we can just call the self dot movement method in the update method of the cat and that will be pretty much all we'll be doing in this video with regard to the cat sprite. Now we can scroll down uh, and create the cat object and I'm going to call it cat with a lower um, with a lowercase c um, just so that it's easier to remember. And if you remember um, stuff from sprites uh, which I did an entire series on um, you know that a, uh, for a sprite to work, it requires a group. So I'm going to quickly create a group called cat group. And within the main loop, I'm going to call its draw and update functions. So as it turned out, I'd forgotten to add a win uh, at the screen or the display surface in, in my draw method. So uh, once I've made that addition, I can run my code. So as it turns out, um, the cat moves extremely fast and it's quite difficult to control it. And the reason for this is um, that I've not regulated um, the main loop um, by any sort of timer. And to fix this, all we need to do is set up a frame rate. We already set up a clock to do this and all we need to do is to just call this function called tick and I'm going to enter in a frame rate of um, 60 frames per second. And once you have this in place and now you hit the run key, um, you should see that you the program works pretty perfectly and you can move the cat around. Of course, we've not you know fixed the edges and the cat can still move off the screen. But all of that is for the next video and I'm going to end this video right here. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.